you know, we really start need to start watching British television because it seems to be better than any fucking garbage that they put out in the U.S. Honestly, I actually like watching British television, and it this these two movies definitely prove it. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Charming Analysis Podcast. I'm Mari. I'm Jay. And today we are going to be talking about Paddington 1 and 2. Yep. So, um, so before you guys, so before we start, um, these are movies, these are British, um, movies that have been out for like a while. (laughs) They came out in 2014 and 2017 with a third movie coming out next year in January. So keep that in mind and we will be talking about that as well. A month of great movies. We, anyway, (laughs) um, we're going to start with the first movie, Paddington. Why don't you explain what Paddington is for those who don't know, honey? Uh, I think it is a children's character or a children's property that's very popular. Um, it reads to me like Winnie the Pooh, but I also think that Winnie the Pooh is not from the U.S., if I can recall. I don't think so. I think yeah. it's British as well. I think... <laughs> So, well, who am I? Who am I to judge? I think they just are good at making bears. Um, so, yeah, this is a, it's about a story about an anthropomorphic bear named Paddington who has to move from Peru to London in order to find a new family. And he, he, um, come, he like, he joins the, he joins a family called the Browns and he goes on quite an adventure to, uh, try to fit in with this family. (laughs) And the power went out. Isn't that so precious? Isn't that great? Oh, uh, it's okay. Cause we are professional and we will keep on, um. We'll keep on rocking this boat, even if we're in the pitch black dark. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yep, okay, that Second happened. Second time today, damn. Yeah, wow. Anyway. Crazy. Um, so what did you think of the Paddington movies, honey? <laughs> I thought I thought they were immensely charming. Uh, very, very, very charming. Um, I think because... It was very, um, it was just, it was just, it felt very timeless and it felt like, um, it didn't have to like, you know, do a whole lot of modern shit. If like everything in this movie feels like, like it could be watched whenever at whenever in any decade and it would still be, you know. A good lighthearted kids movie. Honestly, yeah. Like it could have been made. Um, it could have been made like in the eighties, and like you can watch it today, and it would still be like you know timeless. That's what that's what that's what I I think. Um, honestly, no spoilers for the second one, but I think these two are honestly some of the really, best. Tri- like Greg, really good kids movies like like not even good, good kids movies but like really good movies in general and they're like i think they're timeless timeless in my opinion and like the the way that they it that they um tell it like it's a storybook it kind of reminds me a little bit of how wes anderson direct directs movies except Definitely. with the you know british constant, undertones no <laughs> except with the constant the uh, like in-house dialogue that he has but like the the way that everything's like i guess framed and shot kind of remind me a little bit of west anderson it a does little honestly bit. and it was like it was just so nice like all of the like the way that it was shot the cinematography the way that they made london look pretty without it looking like you know real life london <laughs> um, i i don't know it was just it just had such a just such a grandiose kind of feel to it. Like every time we went into like one of those like n- like a new building, I was like, oh my god, I love the way that you sh- you shot this. Like the like, cinematography in both these movies is just incredible. Yeah, like they did such a fantastic job doing that. 
honestly. Like, I'm genuinely the cinematography, surprised. Cinematography, the setting locations, the costumes. Yes. Like, and just Paddington in general is just so charming. And, like, this is such a wholesome movie. Like, I'm surprised we don't have much more from... We don't have many wholesome um, leads. Which is nice. Like, they always have to... Like, it's, like, it has to be... It... <sighs> You can do wholesome wrong. I've seen wholesome done to where it's stupidity. But it really doesn't. It kind of reminds me a little bit about you. Where he wants to see the good in people and stuff like that. And he wants to like, you know, he's like, well, I I want to do it like this because it's nice and polite. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't hate a character like that. I can't, I can't find like, you know, I can't dislike a character like that. So it's like. It's just it's just nice, and a lot of people are might find that boring, but it's really really sweet. And yeah, like, like it's such a good like fucking movie. Honestly, like genuinely, I I was we were both on the edge of our seats with it. Like, there's nothing really to hate about Paddington, and, it's and I funny. think it's great. It's funny. It's, it's, like, it's funny in a wholesome way. Yeah, it's very funny in a wholesome, cheeky way. Like, you know, British humor normally is. And funny. that's, like, one of the things I like about, like, British, like, animation and just, like, British, like, live action and stuff like that. Because, like, I'm pretty sure Good Omens is also British and stuff like that. Or at least takes place. BBC, yeah. Yeah, so... It also, like, I don't know if it was just coincidence, because I've actually tried to look this up, and I couldn't really find much what? on it, but, like, they had similar locations to some areas in Good Omens, but I don't know if that's just coincidence or not. Uh, it might just be a coincidence. But still. <laughs> or it like, might just be a very popular shooting location. That you never too. Know. <laughs> but, like, the Paddington movies are just so good. Like, yeah, they are. Like, the first movie basically talks about him fitting in with everybody else and stuff like that. And I honestly loved these movies. Like, there's nothing to hate about Paddington, and I think that's a good thing. We need to have more, like, wholesome protagonists done, like, the way Paddington was Paddington We always was get done. the assholes, and there's nothing wrong with the assholes. It's just there's too many There's assholes. way too many. We need to, like, have more good-hearted, wholesome, like, leads. And I think... These movies are really charming, and I'm sad we don't have more from this franchise, because I feel like this would make such a good TV show. This would also make real... Th- they need more stuff for this fucking franchise, honestly. Or, and at least from this director as well. Like You did Wonka. I know, but like... Which we haven't seen. <laughs> like, the newest one? Yeah, the, the one to the oh, Chalamet. Damn, we're yeah. gonna have to watch that now. If, this, if it's good as this, I'm watching it. Like... It should be. I've heard good things about it. I've heard that it's too whimsical, but, you know. I like whimsical. I mean, it's fine, uh, but it's supposed to be following, I mean, Gene Wilder is treasure again. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But we're talking about Paddington. And what was your favorite part about the Paddington movies? Because to me, like, the first one, like, both of them were honestly, like, really good. Like, I can't decide which one I like better, but... Like, for the first one, I just loved that he, instead of, like, having, like, a rivalry with the siblings, he's actually trying to get to know them. Yeah. And I like that the kids are, like, not on as hard on him after, like, he proves that he can handle himself. Mm-hmm. I also like his confidence and the way he's willing to, like, help anybody in need as from, like, the second movie after, like, him being there for, like, a while. Yeah. He gotten to prove that he's a good character and stuff. And he has good character. Um, another thing I found interesting about the first movie is that, like, um, it does have, like, an overarching plot. But they don't have too many little, like, individual, like, mini plots with it. Which... I think it's nice. Like, like we get, to, like, an overall story with it. Yeah. But it's not, like, super high stakes, which I think is good. Like, it's a nice, like, chill fucking movie, and I'm glad, like, I finally got to watch it, because I've been wanting to watch... I've been wanting to watch them, too. Honestly. Yeah. Because I've heard nothing but good things about it, and I'm happy to, like, sit down and watch them, because I just... I need some more wholesome fucking good things to recommend to people because by god i don't get enough of those <laughs> Honestly, i really yeah. don't i i need good i need good movies in my life please <laughs> yeah like this is definitely one that i would definitely recommend to somebody like yeah these are so good um do you have anything else to say about the first one um 
Let me see. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Uh, I liked the. Uh, I don't know. I like the way that certain scenes play, especially when. Um, I don't know that one part where like they they opened up the doll house and it was all the family and one that one. like is like one I of my just favorite parts. such good directing man and it, it makes me so worried it makes me so worried about the third one because I'm just like please please I don't want to lose any imagination or any like of that storytelling storytelling in that third one please I beg of you please just. They did a, such a good yeah. job with, like, these two movies, because, um, honestly, I was genuinely surprised. Like, the, I like also like how they did the dollhouse mm-hmm. kind of, like, thing for both movies. Yeah. Well, one was a scrapbook. Yeah. Thing. But I l- also like that they have some 2D elements into it, even though if it's only for, like, a few seconds and it's, like, really sketchy, but mm-hmm. it's still, like, really good. And, like, another thing about Paddington, like, he's... CGI, but it's to the point where it's like it's not realistic. It's not realistic, but it fits well with the story. Like they didn't over like detail him. They didn't make him look like a real bear. Yeah, like they made him look like a bear, but they didn't make him. They made him an anthropomorphic bear. Basically, basically. if this is basically what Zootopia would look like if it was like semi live action. Yeah, like it's kind of what gives me that kind of vibe. It's like Zootopia, but make it. Not completely like live action, but still have some cartooniness to it. Not like the squash and stretch. It's kind of like a mix between, well, a little bit. It has a little bit of squash squash and stretch, especially when, like, he leans his back mm-hmm. and, like, is very flex- surprisingly flexible for a bear. <laughs> um, that is something I will say about it. Like, it's enough. It's like on a spectrum between squash and stretch and, like, realistic. Yeah. He has his moments of being squash and stretch, but not to like, but not overdone. It's kind of like in the middle mm-hmm. between over, like realistic with like a little bit of cartoony gags, but not to the point where he's basically like bouncing everywhere. Yeah, which I think is a good thing, especially with this kind of movie. I feel like it's a good thing. I feel like when it comes he's to not like overly animated, yeah, he's he's animated just enough to where it's not gonna make. Like, the craziest shit happen. At yeah. least, like... And he has his funny moments. Like, they're genuinely funny moments. Like, thank the Lord it's not fart and poop jokes. Oh. Thank you. Oh, you would have not known about that if you saw, like, the... The, the trailer. The teaser trailer to this. Because it was literally that scene of him in the bathroom oh, doing his ear. Oh, Lord. And I was like, this does not look good. <laughs> I feel like, like it the just trailer... like hijinks the movie and i'm like with the bear and i'm like that does not look good and I that feel put like- me off for the longest time but then i heard no these movies are actually really fucking good i'm like really these movies are good oh well let me go find out for my fucking self well because like i feel like the trailer for now i watch deceiving. it like 10 years later saying oh my god these are actually great <laughs> yeah like this the first movie came out 2014 mm-hmm. so pretty, so 10 years ago so 10 years ago pretty much <laughs> And I feel like a lot of the animation still holds up. Yeah, it does. Like, and it's like 2024. It still holds up. And Mm -hmm. that's actually impressive. Yeah. But yeah. um, I also like the relationship between Paddington and all the family members. Like, they each have their own. I like the mom. The mom is so. The mom is the best. One of the best parts of this movie. The mom is like, so like supportive and caring. She's like the best fucking mom. She's whimsical too. Like, I love I would the love mom. to have a mom. <laughs> yes. oh, sorry. But I would have loved to have a mom like that. She's, honestly. like, such a good mom. Like, the, honestly. She's an mom. illustrator. Like, she also is, like, really in tune with, like, her kids as best she can. And, like, she just wants to make sure everyone's good and yeah. stuff like that. The dad, like, at first, I was kind of like... He's a little... Oh. He's, he's a very, uh... He's a very, like, no-nonsense, kind of, like, overprotective father. But, but he gets Not better. in a bad way. He's just, like, you know, he's just, like, a little bit strict. But he isn't, like, you know. Yeah, but he he gets better. Yeah. He gets better over time. And I think that's a good thing. Especially with how they decide to do all the stuff But it's a this. found family thing. And I always love a good found family. Same so. here. But this is, like, found family done right. Yeah. This is definitely done right. And it's not, like, overly, like, 
rivalry kind of based, but I think it's great. Yeah. Like, it's a healthy found family trope. Yeah. Like, probably the healthiest I think I've ever seen in, like, films. It's a happy found family. Has there ever been a bad uh, found family, like, that you've seen in media? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head, but, um, I'm trying to think. Like, because I know it can be done wrong. I, feel I know like, that, like... I feel like the, the ones There that could be, like, one of those situations where you do find family, but it's not to- It's not toxic, but it's, like, the best you can do, in a way. Yeah. Like, I... Um, but, like, not the best in the world. I, I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head right now, but, like... Like, trust me. Like, I get, like, you know, found family is a big fucking thing right now, and, like... Especially you know, with, like, how... A lot of, like, stuff is kind of just, we kind of need something like that. Yeah, but, like, you know, be with your family until you cannot be with them anymore. Or, like, your family can be anyone, just, you know, you know, make them care about you. Yeah, but these guys automatically cared about Paddington, even even if the dad Well, I mean, the mom immediately. And the son did, and the daughter and the father had, like, reservations, but, like... But after a bit, they got better. Like, yeah. it got better over time. He just needed to be cool. <laughs> My goodness. He just needed to be cool. But, yeah, that that was that was fun. That was fun. Um, I wonder if it's going to be, like, because um, didn't, um, what was the other one that came out that kind of was similar to Paddington? Lyle like, Lyle Crocodile. Yes. I want to watch no, it to see what they do. I don't want to hear Shawn Mendes sing crocodile tears like i don't want to i see still want to see it just that to actually it. looks like a padded to that can that is bad like legit well, like you don't know that, that looks like that looks like some shit that i would be like you see this is what paddington could have been i still want to watch it just to kind of see oh, what God. they did do with oh, it oh no even if it's like not as good every time like something gets memed i'm just gonna be like if it gets mean to high heaven, it was always probably mediocre. you said the second one was memed. And no, it, was it wasn't so mean. It wasn't mean. I just saw the clip everywhere online, like like the full clip being like part of the movie. You know, oh parts of the movie gosh. on TikTok, and you watch the TikTok to see the whole movie. Oh, like that clip was being shown everywhere of him in the prison making the marmalade. Um, no, I'm talking about sounds that come from movies. I'm like. That movie's probably mediocre or bad if it's getting mean to death. You like never legit. Know. No, I I have a I have the a theory. Trolls movies are good and they get memed. I have a theory though. They're not. But Mari, no good actual good fucking movies ever get like. Yeah, I like the trolls movies. They're fun. They're not good movies. But they're still fun. <laughs> they're still fun, but they're not good movies. So I will consider mediocre or bad movie sounds that. That are like you know meme to death to be mediocre or from bad movies, oh, and I've never been wrong. So you should shush. <laughs> anyway, anything else to say about the first one? Um. Oh, I thought it was like a continuation of the like the the first and the second one because they're kind of similar. It's very simple stories. Yeah. And the other one has to deal with him going to prison because he was being framed because he wanted to get a birthday present for his great aunt Lucy. And that's basically the, that's basically the fucking plot. But it makes, it's so simple. But they, they make it work. They make simple plots work. And And I also like the relationship between Paddington and all the prisoners. Yeah. Like, he turned them all, he turned them all pink and gay. Honestly, yeah. But in the most wholesome way possible. Yes. But like, I still like the fact, like, of the cinematography of that too. Like, even the villains were interesting. Like, in these movies. Like, they were good villains, but in, in like, a cheeky way. Yeah. Like, cheeky villains. One was Nicole Kidman, and the other one looked like Jeff Goldblum. And Honestly, as soon did. as I pointed that out, you could not stop I him. couldn't unsee it. I legit couldn't unsee it. I know. It was like, hey, it kind of looks like a younger Jeff Goldblum with glasses. <laughs> but... Yeah, they, they was really, it was they're all really fun. They were all really interesting. Um, God, um, I don't know why. It kind of reminds me of. Um, kind of reminds me. Fuck! What was that uh, Coen Brothers movie? The 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 western. It kind of reminded me of the way that that was like shot a little bit. They need to, like they need to um. Someone needs to do this, but make it 
making an ad, like an adult mystery film. Like the style in an adult mystery film. Yeah, I would like to see more from this franchise. Although I think that's just Knives Out. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, someone, uh, I'm sure that exists. I, th- I think maybe the Coleman brothers did. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, I just have a lot of ideas in my head. And I'm like, what if we take elements from this movie and put it into this movie? Like something like that. Oh, brother. I don't know. I just That's just how my head works. I'm like, oh, it kind of reminds me of that. But done in this way. But yeah, we'll talk about the second movie a bit because both of them are very similar, but both are very good. Yeah. They're also made by the same director. Yes. Which, for some reason, the third one isn't, and I find that kind of interesting because I'm like, we'll see how that goes. I mean, this director cut hit with these movies. Honestly, I'm so, genuinely yeah. surprised. Like, he hit them on the mark. Yeah. The second one also, like, compared to the first one, the second one... Um, they do have, it's, it's basically similar, like, plot-wise, but trying to fit in into another area, but this one kind of goes a little bit, like, uh, it takes it another step further and kind of, like, makes it, um, a a bit different Mm -hmm. with, like, how they're approaching it. They're kind of approaching it in, like, a better way to where, like, they're not just, like, making all the prisoners, like, hate him, Mm -hmm. like, completely, like, like, a few people like him, and then after he befriends the chef, that's when the sh- the film starts, like, picking up a lot. And they make the prison all happy and gay and everything, and just, like, it was just, it's just nice. It's just nice and Paddington nice is so wholesome. He made prison wholesome. He made prison wholesome. That's, that, that has is, to be something. That is a record for wholesomeness, if I've ever seen one. And it wasn't annoying. It wasn't annoying because this whole movie's fucking whimsy. And it's yeah, like and, like, cute. they made it good. Like, they made it, like, good. Maybe that's why wholesomeness doesn't get, like, um, a lot of recognition. No, that's why wholesomeness sometimes doesn't work. Because people play with the... People play with the wholesome character. Like, they like they act with them, but it it's not... The actual product isn't wholesome, if I were to say it. Um, this movie, this whole movie, this whole atmosphere is just wholesome goodness. And that's why it just works. Because... Like, it works well. Because it, it, it cares, you know? And also, the guy, the guy voicing Paddington has just such a lovely, charming voice. He really does. Like, uh, it's just so nice. And he's like, oh, pardon me. I, I don't know why I said that. Like, oh, pardon me. I'm <laughs> like... He just, like, like it's works just, like, well. It's just, like, so soft, and it's, like, And, like, the nice. humor... I will say this, though. One of the funniest parts about the second movie... Mm-hmm. Um, like, both movies are really good, but this one does make it a little bit funnier, but in, like, a corny, like, cheeky way. Like, it, I'll use an example. So, in the beginning of, like, the movie, Paddington's trying to, like, raise money to get a book he really wants to get for his aunt. Yeah. And one of the things he starts doing is window cleaning. I know. <laughs> and he tries to do it, like, the regular way. And then because after a while he couldn't really get the hang of it, he was like, oh, I have an idea. And he just starts, like, rubbing his little tiny booty on, like, the window. But, like, he's, like, trying to clean it with his fur. And that's basically how he decides to clean all the windows after that. And I don't know why, but it was so cute and funny. Makes everyone's life better. He legit makes everyone's life so happy. Honestly, that was, like, so funny. Like, I couldn't stop laughing because I thought that was the cutest shit. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, he's so cheeky in, like, the best way. Mm -hmm. And, like, I fucking love Paddington. This makes you want to watch more content with him. You're like, I like Paddington. He's just such a wholesome, nice guy. Like, you either get the wholesome, nice, like, nice stuff from Britain, or you get, like, the really, really weird... Watchy or weird shit. Weird, dark comedy type shit. Yeah, and not everything has to be, like, dark comedy, like, weird shit. Like, give us more wholesome shit like this. Like, this is good. Isn't Mr. Bean from... Yes. Yes, he is. from Britain. He's from Britain. But he's also the exception to this he's as well. A because it, little he's, he's cheeky, but he kind of makes it. He, he's kind of more naive, though. Is that Ryan Atkinson? No, it's not. I don't remember. Um, Ryan Atkinson was Miss, Miss uh, Pee Wee. That's Pee Wee Herman. That's Pee Wee. I don't know who. Different guy. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking but about. But anyway. Um, that would be a fucking. Whoever played uh, Mr. Bean and Pee Wee. 
Oh lord! If like if we if we brought him back to life and they meet and they met, what would have been? Like? I don't. That would have been crazy. That would have been the crazy crossover. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't do a crossover like that. That yeah. would have been like interesting. That would have been so that. Weird. Those two would have been like interesting to cross over. Yeah. But anyway, um, basically both movies are very charming in their own way. Like mm-hmm. I think both are just great outright like none like neither one is better or worse than the other i think they're both good no so before we get to our ratings there are they do uh, like i've mentioned before they are technically in the making of a third movie mm-hmm. called paddington in peru and it's yes. basically supposed to be coming out end of the year for britain and stuff but for the u.s and canada it's supposed to be coming out like january 17th mm-hmm. of like 2025 so, it is done by a completely different director. Yeah. And stuff like that, because I actually did look this up. I want to know some theories and shit, and I want to know what you think the third one's going to be like. Um, Because it's basically them, I guess, going to meet, like, Aunt Lucy, and they're supposed to have hijinks and shit. Yeah. It's basically what I looked up for the something plot. Something is going to happen. <laughs> like, it probably will be the last movie. I wouldn't be surprised, trilogy. but at the same time... No would, one can pull a Planet of the Apes, let me tell you that. Yeah. Or at least, like, no one can pull something with this compared to other shit. So, mm-hmm. Even though it's not done by the same director. I will say this, though. Even if this third movie is shit, which I really hope it isn't, can we at least say that these first two movies are, like, the best thing ever? Like, these two, like, the tr- the... The double, like, the double feature, honestly, is, like, the best I thing. can say that they're really, really great. They're really great double watches, honestly. It was, like, they were filmed, like, well, not back-to-back, but, like, it's it just seems like... Because the second one came out 2017. Yeah. So, so it came out, like, three, four years after. I was, like, either they got a different actor for the kid or that kid hit puberty hard. Jesus Christ. The guy, I think, is an adult for, like... Paddington. No, I mean like the the son. Oh, the son. Well, I was like that me. is not the same actor. Prob- if it is, oh my god, he probably kid. hit puberty, and there's nothing wrong with that. I know, but it was like throwing me off. I'm like, is that the same kid? That cannot be the same kid. I might actually look that. Up. Yeah, please, I'm because I highly that doubt up. that that is. Like honestly, I'm gonna try. Oh, let's my god. see. You're gonna try when the up. power's out. I'm gonna try. Oh god. The power went out, like, the second time today, and, like, it is now 12.30 a.m. when we film this, and it doesn't, and it gets more annoying every single time, and it's annoying, and I don't like it. Samuel Jocelyn does the one in the first movie. Who Mm -hmm. does him in the second? Let's see. Samuel. Let's see. It cannot be the same guy. It is the same guy. It is? It is. Oh my god, he hit puberty hard, dude. He, he really looked did. He looked like a different kid. He really did. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like From what I looked at, he's it's the every same guy. single actor was the same, but like the kid. The kid, like, you know, even like the girl like looked the same, but that boy looked like he aged like ten years. I'm like Well, don't forget, oh like god. boys age a lot, like once they hit puberty. Like, I know they, they like, grow a lot. Oh my god. I'm just like this is just crazy. It genuinely was crazy. I was like not expecting. I was that. like, that, that is not the same kid. I was. It probably. Was kinda, it, it is the I same. I was kind of shocked. I'm like, okay, I guess he was. He, they were feeding him something because he's a growing boy. Um, oh my goodness. But yeah, I really, 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 really enjoyed these. These are some of the most entertaining kids movies I've seen in a long time, especially after fucking Cars. Holy shit! This was like a fucking palate cleanser it's like you gave me wine from the fucking holy grail and it was like oh i see the light <laughs> so, so what are some of your theories about the third movie because like besides i don't have any theories in- i just want it to be good like i really do hope oh it's my good. god please let this be a at least a good movie so we can say that this is a like good- the best trilogy i think they've done in like a long time can well, we say that i don't know what else is the best trilogy of all time well, like the best wholesome trilogy. Let's the say best that. Wholesome. The best wholesome trilogy. Like, can we go for a third? Even if we don't get that, at least we could say we have a double feature uh, that was good. Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh my god. Star Wars. Um, 
Okay, Toy how about Story. A more, how about more modern? <laughs> oh no, Toy Story ain't even <laughs> trilogy anymore. It's um, like got four, maybe it's five. Got four movies. movies. Um, my goodness, fuck, that's all I can think of <laughs> right now. Um, The Hobbit. <laughs> oh lord. Anyway, um, um, yeah. Do you have anything else to say before we give our ratings? Because um, I'm gonna give my ratings first. I uh, give your ratings. Okay, so. Um, first movie, I thought it was very charming and very wholesome. Mm -hmm. Same with the second one. Very charming, very wholesome. It took it a little bit more with the humor, which Mm -hmm. I think is good, but they did it in a good way. Like, same humor as the other one, but I think both interchangeably are very good. I do personally recommend both of them if you are going to watch them and stuff like that. I think it's great. I don't really have anything wrong to say about them, to be honest. I really have good praise for both of them. Like, I don't really see any issues with them. At least that I can think of. Honestly, for both, I give them a 9.5. I think they're fucking great. You really like it. I really like them. Like, I think they're great. And I really do hope that this third movie does turn out good. And I will say this. We will be reviewing the third one when it comes out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I... Really like them both, and they are really, really, really good movies. Um, I think I like the first one a little bit better by, like, the tiniest of margins. Because, like, you know, when you go into the sequel, you already expect it to, like, everything that's going on. You expect the wacky subplots and stuff like that. And, like, you know, just for that by itself, I think, like, you know, for being the first movie and you going into this world... You are already expecting to go into the second movie being already whimsical. And it is. And it's great. But you already expect that. So I still, I, I kind of just like the first movie just a tiny little bit more than the second one. But that's just me. Um, so I'm going to give the, I'm going to give the first one a 9 out of 10. And then I'm going to give the second one like 8.5. Okay, that's that's reasonable. But yeah, we are going to review the third one when it comes out. Yes. Because we have to at this point. I didn't even know they were making a third. So I really do hope the third one's going to be good. And I really do hope that um, if it somehow isn't, we're still going to have two really good movies. Yeah. We can at least say that. At least we still have two good movies that we can look back on. And we'll be like, we can forget about the third. <laughs> Watch us say that and it turns Can't out really forget good. forget the third ever happened. <laughs> Watch us say that and the third's like good. Yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. We got to figure out what's going on with the fucking power at this point. Yeah, it's still out. (laughs) It's still out, and we've been recording this for half an hour. We got to figure out what's going on with the power and stuff. I was not expecting the power to go out during this. But But it did. But at least, like, we can talk about stuff while we wait for it to come back on. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, we got to figure out what's going on with that. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'm Mari. I'm Jay. And we're out. Bye, guys. Bye.